afternoon to everyone. Thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to this panel. Thank you for Capital Link for having us and uh, coordinating this panel, which uh, the topic, and I have to read this, I apologize, my notes are not that good by heart. Uh, we will talk about technology and uh, basically how the embracing of technological revolution or evolution is taking shipping to the next stage. And before I introduce the panel, just to clarify that since we're talking about technology even in our everyday lives, it is uh, a fact of life that technology slowly is uh, entering the shipping and maritime sector in all different uh, manners. Either this is new technology, new engines, new equipment for all sorts of reasons that need to be installed on board and crew need to uh, handle them, or uh, more, or even software, sensors, connectivity, and so forth that is taking the operation and the shipping companies monitoring the vessels to a different level. So, with the panel that we have today, we will try to explore a little bit how this is uh, done in practice and what is their experience, and probably some outlook and some uh, views. Uh, from their point of view. So let's introduce uh, the panel. Uh, we have, one, starting from my left, Mr. George Papayanopoulos from Common Progress. He's uh, one of the principals and happy to have him here since he has a good experience and especially uh, also on technical issues. Uh, Mr. Foti Dalmiras, he's the CEO of Andriaki, well known company here in Greece. and. Uh, seasoned professional. Uh, Mr. Tassos Tamouranis, general manager of uh, Dalex, also many years in the field and he has a good grasp of the topic and looking forward to hear his views. Mr. George Pularas, CEO of NSL, also many years in the company, seeing different changes over the years. And last but not least, Mr. Uh, Martin Ackerman from Synergy. So, uh, Synergy Group CCO. Uh, Martin, it's good to have you here. Thank you for traveling and being here with us. So, I uh, will uh, address some questions to our panel. The idea is, and we have already discussed this, but uh, I'll invite everyone to, if there is any comment, please raise it so we can have some active uh, discussion. And uh, hopefully you as well will come out of this panel after it's completed with a little bit wiser. Hopefully. So, starting with uh, George, George Papagenopoulos on my left. Uh, Mr. Papagenopoulos, regarding technology, many have claimed, and probably it's true, that um, shipping is not so much on the forefront of technology adoption in general, that we are lagging behind. Uh, what is your view? What is your uh, opinion on that? Uh, thank you, George, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. For the question, I'd say that that statement is uh, partly true and partly false, and I will explain why. Um, as regards the digital adoption and transformation, obviously we know that shipping has been lagging other industries such as automotives or um, aviation, for example. But uh, that has been mainly for the reason that technology was not available up until very recently. We know that satellite communications from and to the ship have uh, matured only very uh, a couple of years ago, allowing the transfer of data. So for any digital system, of course, to be developed, we need data transfer and processing. So that is the main reason that uh, shipping has been left behind. However, not the only reason. We know that uh, our industry is a fragmented industry in the sense that the majority of companies manage and operate uh, small to medium-sized fleets. And for smaller organizations, up to now at least, transforming their processes and adopting digital tools hasn't been as obvious as it was in, for larger corporations. For larger corporations, it was an absolute necessity. For smaller organizations up to now, it wasn't as, the cost-benefit wasn't as obvious, however, due to the regulatory environment becoming I mean, extremely challenging and the world becoming uh, complex 
day by day. I think that uh, for regardless of size, any organization that needs to stay up to date and wants to modernize and ensure quality of their services will adopt technologies, digital technologies as well. So the part of the statement with which I do not agree is the fact that the shipping has not been adopting technology as fast, which I consider to be wrong in the sense that shipping has proven through the millennia to be the most efficient, safe and environmentally friendly mode of transportation. So that has been achieved only through the adoption of time, timely adoption and successful adoption of the available technology. So I, I do not agree with that statement and uh, I, I believe that the, the only reason that there might be a time lag in adopting technology has to do with the importance of shipping to the world economy and world trade in the sense that any technology that is being implemented has to be tested and has to be proven to be safe and reliable. And digital technologies nowadays have proven to have matured significantly. And I think we'll see an important transformation going ahead in the coming years. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, it's true that when we're talking about digitalization, which is, has come to our lives recently, connectivity is a main issue. Because if you cannot transfer big amounts of data, then you cannot harvest all the benefits. And I agree as well that there is a fragmentation. Here in Greece, when we say shipping, we mean owning, managing. But uh, there are a lot of big variety in different sizes. Thank you about that. Um, Mr. Pularas, if I can go to you. Uh, I mean, yes, Mr. Papaginopoulos also said that there are benefits. Uh, of course, there has to be available technology to be adopted, connectivity and so forth. From your experience, what benefits would you largely say that we have? Thank you, George. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, the, the benefits are multiple because the application of technology on board vessels is also wide. Uh, and uh, with particular reference to performance optimization, to management efficiency, uh, to crew welfare, uh, on board safety as well. Now we have the tools to have a real-time monitor of our environmental performance. We can optimize our voyages. We can manage better with powerful ERPs and business intelligence units uh, applied management controls. Particularly, we can manage the challenge of a bigger scale without losing our control standards. Um, we can also provide on board vessels safety barriers before the final safety barrier, which was a human, as it has navigational safety, compliance, uh, and last but not least, uh, crew welfare issues, like for example communication is already mentioned, entertainment of the crew. Um, uh, last, also very, very important, the telemedicine services for which allow shipping companies uh, not only to manage better an emergency, but also to proactively monitor the, the health of our shippers. So yes, the, the, the benefits are really uh, multiple because the application of technology is very wide on board vessels. I think you touched on an interesting subject by mentioning all these things that we have. I mean, when we talk about technology, we talk about a variety of things. So it, it does affect all aspects of um, uh, operations. Um, but I'll go to Mr. Jamoranis. And um, I understand that you have been trying different, and you've taken different initiatives, um, meaning on adopting different software and so forth. Can you share a little bit of the insights and your experience? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, for us, digitalization is something that goes way beyond uh, simply transferring or managing or logging our data in, uh, in digital means. Uh, we, we have come to a point that we believe that uh, in order to get the best out of the new technologies that are coming, uh, we need to reassess and redesign our business processes around them. Uh, what do I mean? Every day in our offices, uh, what we do is we get uh, input in the form of requests from all the stakeholders, whether this is the ship or the charter, 
uh, all the third parties and uh, by conveying them linearly uh, within our organization and acting upon them we transform them gradually into decisions or instructions or actions. So if we were running a production line, the raw material would be information uh, and the end product would be, let's say, decisions and actions. Now, uh, if you want to make your production line better, what you have to do is to make it shorter, make the belt shorter and make it go faster. Now with the abilities we have with the various ERPs, what we can do is combine several um, action points, several working stations and make them action hubs. We give uh, authority and accessibility to people to act on the same, let's say, incident simultaneously and do their own job and then to draw out outcome out of it. This is making the production line faster. Now, with the abilities provided by the digital systems, uh, which is self-logging and uh, easy uh, and quick and fast review and auditing, uh, we can skip or eliminate several linear actions such as uh, notifications, endorsements and approvals. And that makes the production line shorter. So with a shorter and faster production line, you do increase efficiency. Um, what we have uh, as a challenge, what we see as a challenge in that, um, is that uh, we really need to uh, identify our needs before starting. Uh, identify and assess what we do and uh, see where we want to go. We have to build a, a meaningful strategy that we will have to follow. Uh, if we don't do that, or if we fail to do it correctly, we risk uh, uh, of simply throwing digital tools somewhere and, uh, uh, and maintaining an all, our old habits. And I, I, I came across a quote uh, recently saying that uh, old processes plus new tools uh, give uh, expensive old processes only. So we, we have to... to to take care not to, to fall, fall into, the, into the trap of imitating what we were doing, but dressing it with some digital uh, uh, instruments. Uh, we also see um, a challenge in, uh, in people's natural resistance to change. Uh, we all know what we're talking about. While the young people, the, the juniors that are coming in full of life and energy, uh, are very keen in adapting uh, adopting and adapting the tools that they have and they make use of them because they, they, they feel more secure. They can rely on better information, make better decisions, they get confidence out of them uh, and they, they are a drive towards this change. Um, in all workforces uh, we see and we have uh, senior people that know the job very well, they know it by heart, they have been doing it for ages and they have optimized their uh, ways of doing it by, by experience, by time. Uh, these people are, are not so keen on trying anything new. Uh, they feel that, uh, of course, they are being pushed out of their comfort zone and uh, possibly in risk of being exposed. So they, they will be tempted to uh, sideline anything new, any new process that is coming their way and uh, let it starve and, and degrade. Uh, this is human behavior, all the practices we, 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 we exercise uh, to, to uh, go around human behavior are applicable of course, but it is a main, it is a main challenge. And, um, Another one is uh, benchmarking. For every change to be meaningful, uh, there have to be uh, measurable, measurable results. We have to bring something back to the users that they will see as benefit and, and get inspired and, and embrace the change and follow it. The broader the picture is though, the, the broader you make it, the broader the, the, chain, the change becomes. Uh, the less ground you have at the end to, to measure yourself on. And uh, 
this is a risk of, uh, of being judged as, um, I don't know, irrelevant or something. Uh, again, there is a, uh, there is a way uh, to battle with this. Uh, going back to the strategy, a, a true, meaningful strategy can uh, focus where you will be. Not at the end, but at a certain point after you, you, you walk this path. This is how we see it. Okay, very good. I've noted some things down. Let's take a round and then I'll ask all of you a couple of things because I'm interested in this cultural element and how people behave. So I think it's the interesting part. Um, if I jump to uh, and go to Mr. Valmiraz, um, I mean, as we said, Mr. Papayanopoulos said, adoption of technology, it depends a lot on many other things, one of them being availability. But do you see any, what drivers do you see from your side? being the ones that are pushing technology and digitalization in shipping. Thank you, George. Thank you all. Actually, the drivers that we see are the benefits that have been addressed previously. The drivers are mainly the, the pillars we see in our sustainability process, our uh, shipping corporate social responsibility which uh, practically are the environmental, the social and the governance. In terms of environmental, technology and digital applications are the main accelerators towards decarbonization, which uh, you have uh, heard so much about it. This is only one example. Currently, we are amid uh, a turmoil for the availability and sustainability of alternative fuels, involving the entire uh, value chain from uh, the feedstock level up to their consumption and their uh, byproducts. This cannot be done without serious investment in science, technology, and digital applications. And this is only one example. On the other hand, SIP's performance is now being used, monitored through AI and machine learning models, which are rather new in our industry, which enable a more realistic input in terms of environmental performance, and not only environmental, I would say commercial as well. In terms of social, technological and digital solutions assist us to focus more on the human element in order to have qualified, highly trained, safe and healthy people on board as well as ashore. Now we have our first female master on board our ships. This is diversity. This also and ships uh, and, uh, enhance the diversity. This is a result of a highly uh, sophisticated training pattern that we follow and all the tools that are available in this in this extent simulators etc. This all has to do with digital applications and technology. Communications. Internet has improved a lot in terms of quality, bridging the distance between ships and shore, improving well-being and health on board. It was mentioned that tele telemedicine is already here. We are actively using it. Where people have been saved this way. Uh, if this was not available, the fatalities on board the ships would have been more. So indeed, technology and uh, digital uh, solutions assist in this respect a lot. Not to mention mental health. Mental health has become a key parameter considering the very challenges, challenging circumstances and environment that we are operating. So we have to stand by uh, in each one of our seafarers, communication has been improved through a digital application. We have video conferences, we have one-to-one -one, uh, sessions. We can address each and every mental problem or psychological concern or whatever else. So this is indeed a great step to address the very difficult environment that we have to operate in. In terms of governance, all above what has been said so far reflect more reliable decision-making, 
based on data and analytics, and improve all management processes. We have to say that digital solutions also improve the financial institutions taking decisions based in uh, environmental performance. Of course, this is quite contradictory with the previous panelists because as of now, the indexes that are being used are indeed not fair or not accurate to say. So this has to be streamlined throughout the years. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I will jump to the uh, last of the panel, uh, Mr. Ackerman. Um, I mean, technology we've seen and all, uh, everyone has mentioned that, let's say, it touches upon a lot of different aspects. It's, uh, um, the, uh, and it helps shipping companies in many different ways. Uh, how, because one of the hottest topics is decarbonization and many have been discussing it, how do you see technology influencing the agenda and the discussion around the organization? Thank you, George. I was afraid you had forgotten about me for a second, so thank you for, uh, for keeping me in the discussion. I think we have to um, uh, break the elephant into pieces and deal with this in, in chunks, because if we think about the, solving everything in one go, it becomes too daunting a task. So the way we... Um, the way we think about it is at Synergy, where we consider ourselves stewards of change in a way, we break it into four pieces. The, um, the energy saving dev devices piece, <clears throat> the future fuel piece, the digital piece and the social piece. Those we think are the four levers that we need to deal with. And all of them are of course linked, but we need to talk, uh, to talk about these differently. They all affect the decarb agenda, they all affect how we will move forward as an industry. Um, we think, as a sort of stepping back a little bit, I think if we look at shipping before and now, there has been this tendency in the past where it was very much a uh, winner-takes-it-all mentality. People were keeping things close to the chest, people were working in their own silos and very afraid of sharing, and I think we have now moved to a space where it's become the norm that we need to collaborate. We can't achieve these things individually, we need to deal with them as a team. So. Uh, collaboration versus winner takes it all mentality has definitely become uh, much more um, uh, much more prone. So focusing on uh, the digital piece for a second, because I think we need to, in order to take decisions, one of the things we realize very quickly is we need the right data. So I think one of the things we need to work on as an industry is to focus on getting standards and protocols in place for data and agree on exactly what are the measures that we're taking. I think one of the steps that we have uh, moved to, towards in Synergy is implementing what we define as smart ships, where we're basically having sensor-controlled uh, equipment across the ships, so that the data that we get ashore is real-time and without uh, inter interaction by human hand. Because only then we can see uh, you know, what is the real data that we need to deal with, and then we can take the decisions. I mean, we all take this group of people here, I'm sure a lot of us have exposure to paints and fins and docks and we're even grappling with rotor sails and other measures to improve uh, our carbon footprint. But what we often are met with afterwards is, okay, show me how, how is this measurable? How do we make concrete assessments of whether it was successful or not? And that's where the data comes into the picture. So I think stepping back and focusing on that as a chunk is, is very important. Um, and this, the, the fourth level I mentioned was the social piece, and that's where um, especially our colleagues at sea come into play. How do we activate that group of people to become engaged in a meaningful way that they understand the vision as well as us in the offices? Because a lot of this seems to be, you know, still working a little bit with, you know, we have uh, all these, these glossy talks. You know, yesterday I was at the Merce McKinney Center for Zero Carbon, last week it was Global Maritime Forum. And of course, it's all important, but we need to be very concrete in getting these steps into action. And, you know, taking small incremental steps in activating the crews, you know, putting new platforms out there uh, and, and drive learnings is, is important. Sorry, I think I overspent my, my talk here. Yeah. I'm keeping the, uh, the part, I like the part where 
we need to do small incremental steps and take it easy because of the people, you know. And I can see also in other companies where change is always welcome and they throw you all the software and let's implement this and this and that and then you are faced with a tsunami. Uh, but I'm, I take note of what you mentioned and what Mr. Jamuranis mentioned, which I'm a big fan of, where basically technology is welcome. Yes, it can do all these good things and it can help us, sure, why not, whenever it's available. But um, we cannot continue doing what we were doing up until today, simply adding a digital tool. Most of the times you need to redesign the whole thing in order to be efficient. Otherwise, I think the expression of doing the same thing again, but more expensively, it's the right one. I mean, for lack of a better expression, um, I think when we, when we think about how the car was created, it wasn't created by continuous improvement of the horse and carriage. So we need to think differently and act differently. And, you know, even if it's, you know, sometimes we have to take a leap of faith because I think the industry and, and you know, I work with a ton of engineers in our company and, you know, and, you know, they're, they're super skilled, but it's all many decisions. If we can't see exactly what the, the change will be, we're very hesitant to make the step. And sometimes maybe if we, th if we can see sort of with reasonable accuracy that this might be uh, a way forward, or even if the investment is relatively limited, well, let's try it. And I think we have to do a lot of these trial and error, trial and error. To in small them. steps. In small yeah, steps. small steps. Yeah, we're more protected, basically. And going back now, because we're talking about now suddenly, which is very much linked, instead of talking about technology, we're talking about the human element and how people perceive it. And maybe we can close with this. Uh, I mean, from my side, no matter how much technology you have, if you don't know how to use it or implement it in the right way, I mean, you don't get anything at the end of the day. And I think Mr. Jamuranis also mentioned something about the resistance that you might have, about junior and uh, more senior uh, people. Uh, does anybody want to comment on this, on how do you see? Yes, Mr. Pularas? Yeah. Um, adoption of technology is, is a big change. So the companies, who, before deciding to invest, they need to know um, where to go and they need to know the ultimate goal. They need to have to realize feasible expectations, first of all, and also to make uh, an analysis, a self-assessment about what drives the change forward and what potential parameters they bring the change back. So this is very, very important. So the human element is extremely important because naturally there is a tension for resistance. People believe that uh, technology may diminish their roles, may make them le less and less important, which actually is not true because it's opposite. Technology is here to enhance our roles, uh, not to, uh, to make us make working more efficiently and more safely. So we need to change the way we see it. It is the extra pairs of eyes we need to have in management and we do not have it. So technology is giving us this assistance. And uh, of course, we need to consider the human machine element as one system and not to be regarded as independent. Uh, the human performance always prevails on all operations, and I hope this to continue to, to be the reality, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, so I don't think we have nothing to afraid about technology. The opposite, we need to adapt. And also, unavoidably, we will have to create new skills, both on board and ashore, because our everyday reality will become more and more digital. And I think that ashore, uh, at some point, it was mentioned about the amount of data. Uh, the more data you get, uh, you need, one way or the other, something to enhance your ability to yeah process it and make some decision making. Gathering the data is one, is a simplest issue, but the data are too many and basically they mean nothing if there are not people to take care of the systems and if they're not filtered. Correct. I mean the filtering of data is the most important thing and here is the human element which is crucial. Mr. Dalmiras? I, I was about to say the same thing. I mean uh, the data and the analytics are, is a tool is a way to get the proper information. The judgment 
it lies with a with a human, lies with a person that has experience and has the ability to interpret the data. To put things in context, to put yeah. things in context. And this comes in line with what Mr. Vastaruka says said uh, a few minutes ago that you need the old experienced uh, superintendents or people that uh, know the vessel by heart and you need also the new people which are uh, well familiar with uh, big data and how to analyze them. Both of them can have a very good result. However, both of them need to be reskilled on the area that falls behind. Thank you. Yes. Um, coming back to the human element and the benefits that we, we should expect, um, People need to see results from the transformation. And uh, in shipping time, when everything, when everything changes every day, uh, a year's time is quite long. So uh, what we should uh, aim for is uh, uh, changes that will bring results in much shorter periods, let's say four or six months. And uh, people also have the uh, the tendency, the feeling that what they do every day is uh, dull and maybe meaningless and uh, ideally they would like to have more time to do more important and more interesting things. So if we take out some of those things that our colleagues or ourselves as well we think as necessary but not interesting and make us time for the more interesting and the more important things. This will, uh, will be a great incentive to people, even to those senior ones. Uh, so we should have this in mind when we are introducing processes or, or ERPs or everything. Um, people focus mainly on the review, store somewhere the data so I can take them out and, and see what, this, uh, what I can make out of them. But um, if, if we manage to make uh, somebody's day, somebody's reality, more interesting by changing the way he works, this is a success already. Yeah, I think it falls a little bit to what Mr. Ackerman said, that we need to make small changes uh, step by step. These small changes will be also smaller in terms of time and then will show some benefit to the people. And then it's again psychology. I mean, if you see that you're working on something takes four months and I haven't seen anything out of that, you say, I mean, uh, you know, what, what, what's going on here? Um, at some point, we mentioned also about young, uh, younger colleagues and older colleagues and how younger colleagues are more adaptive. Do you believe it's because of the age or simply because we're not changing their way of life? Because, uh, I mean, the way they work. Because, let's face it, we're human beings, they like, it's their comfort zone to work in a specific way. And if you have optimized it and suddenly you come in and you want to change it, for better or worse, the minor object. If I may say, George, it's uh, what we mean by bad habits die hard. In the, in an industry like shipping, which is as ancient as shipping is, uh, certain processes uh, are now are so robust and so uh, established that implementing change is a bit harder than in more uh, modern industries. However, uh, the most important aspect is transfer implementing changes in a safe and reliable manner because the cost of implementing something new um, in a wrong way might be much greater than the intended benefit. Any other comment from anyone else? No? Okay. Uh, we have just a few more minutes. I'll just drop the topic that probably it's in everyone's mind about cybersecurity. I mean, we all know that uh, when we start introducing new technology and new data and more data and so forth, we have to somehow secure it. Uh, anybody would like to share a comment on that? Yeah, please. Uh, cyber security and uh, cyber attacks are hand in hand with technology, unfortunately. Uh, cyber attacks have increased a lot. Lately, we heard about a cyber attack in shipping companies with more than 400 companies attacked. 
uh, in their uh, communication in ERP systems. This resulted uh, in a huge volume of data being available in the dark web, unfortunately, and now the attackers are requesting for ransom. So yes, indeed, there is an increased need to address all uh, these challenges. Unfortunately, cybersecurity and the systems of cybersecurity, in the same sense as antiviruses, follow the cyber uh, attacks and uh, the new ways that uh, the attackers can penetrate uh, into our systems. So this is, this is a continuous battle that uh, we cannot avoid. Of course, technology helps us in this, uh, in this sense to create barriers that, cannot, uh, that do not allow uh, cyber attackers to uh, penetrate our systems. Uh, but I don't, uh, I'm not confident that this will be solved. It will be evolving. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Ackerman, we'll close yeah. with this comment. No, I will just say on the cyber attack, attack piece and the cyber security piece, again, it's a collaborative effort because no shipping company alone can, you know, has the means of power to create the IT infrastructure that can, can harness uh, the threats from the outside. So that's why we're all using Amazon Cloud Services or, we have, you know, it's not a commercial, you know, any of these services out there. Um, yeah, okay. Um, all right, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for your insight, your participation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. We'll stop at this point. Thank you.